Drunk enough, you'll come around if I don't do too much. We had our thoughts, but we had way more ups. Let's make love. That be the reason that you walk on my. Thank you for joining us in the Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. This place was created for those topics that require, well, something a little stronger than just champagne. Over here, we think and drink responsibly. We gotta let them know. The classy drink Hennessy, too. <laughs> now, we don't solve cases over here, but we do give our opinions on them for the people under the stairs. So grab your glass, scoot up, and let's Hennessy what's on the docket for today. Now, take those glasses and raise them in the air that's told here's to the strength to handle obstacles with courage and conviction to the resilience to drive forward and the power of our voices to speak our truth hennessy let's toast so let's get into it so i really fought forever with covering this story because i gotta say i was in damn disbelief i was with all the stuff that's going on these days with our youth i shouldn't have been as surprised as i was but this one absolutely floored me so let's get into it let's talk about it this is Anasia Niles Jolly, and according to charlottealertnews.com, she was arrested on April 5th, 2024, and accused of sex. Press pause. See, this is one of the things that frustrates me now with social media, because they want to censor everything. You can't say this, you can't say that. And to me, it takes away from what actually happened to the victim. It desensitizes the crime when you don't allow people to say the word. So I really don't understand it. These are situations where you need to be able to say, this person was actually assaulted. This person was, oh God. I don't want my video to be shaken down by YouTube. <sighs> so for the sake of honoring their parameters, Anasia Niles Jolly was accused of actually assaulting her six-year-old brother at home on Valcourt Road in Charlotte, North Carolina. So on April 5th, 2024, detectives with the Crimes Against Children Unit of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department were contacted by a Mecklenburg County DSS social worker in reference to a juvenile actual assault. A six-year-old boy told the DSS social worker that he was actually assaulted on April 4th, 2024. The victim alleges that his sister Anasia put her private areas on his private areas and did stuff. Anasia is accused of taking her brother into her room, pulling his pants down, and pulling down her pants. The boy was laid on his back when Anasia got on top of him, touching her private part to his aroused private part. The victim said the alleged encounter was weird and he felt wetness. The victim said he was then wiped off. Once the boy notified the DSS social worker, the police took Anasia in for interrogation. During the questioning, Anasia allegedly admitted that she was actually wet because she was actually touching herself prior to getting on top of her brother. Cops said Anasia said that once she realized what she was doing was wrong, she got off of the young boy. Anasia was then arrested, charged with statutory grape of a child by an adult and one count of indecent liberties with a child. So I tried to look around to find other information on what happened with this story or a follow up on the story or anything and I couldn't find anything. So this is what we have with this story so far. And to be honest with you, in order for me to properly deal with this story, I'm going to have to deal with it from another aspect because if I deal with it based solely on what she did, I'm going to lose my channel. I, I promise you I am. So in order to stay objective, <laughs> as my channel is known for and give you a perspective in situations, we're going to kind of take it away from her and deal with the issue at hand. And the issue at hand is these over-sexualized and over-stimulated young people. Mm -hmm. Because no matter where you look, all you see is sex. Whether you're looking on commercials, whether you're looking in the movies, whether you're walking down the street, whether you're on social media, no matter, some hell, sometimes even in church, 
all you see is sexual exploitation everywhere. I tell my children all the time, back in the day when we had music, now don't get me wrong, we did have some of the ratchet stuff and one of these days we gonna head over to Rumble <laughs> and really deal with the evolution of music. But for the most part, we had love songs. We had music that was gonna woo you in and made you feel like you was wanted and loved. Now in order to woo a girl, they have throat bait. They have my coochie pink, my booty hole brown. They have, now I'm eating his ass, eating his ass. Th this is all you hear with the music these days. You even have people taking classic songs like Prince Do Me and turning it into pure trash like Bug Greasy did. And just think about it. What do you think his name means, huh? Come on, y'all. When we get done with talking about it's just music, it's just music, it's just music, at the end of the day, music carries feelings. That's why a song can come on and immediately your body start moving to it, sometimes without you even knowing because music triggers things on the inside of us. Listen to a song talking about sex for too long. What do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna trigger something on the inside of you to make you want it. And if that's all that's being presented to these youth these days, you wonder why they're overstimulated. You wonder why they're overly sexualized. All the videos nobody has on clothes. What do you think that does to young impressionable individuals who are still learning to figure out their way? Does that take the excuse away? No, it doesn't. But it puts light on a bigger problem. And that bigger problem is, what's the conversations that we are having with our youth about sex, about the outside world, about music, and about triggers? What conversations are we having about them? Back in the day, parents used to have conversations with their kids about the birds and bees. Do we still have those conversations? Or do we leave it up to social media and TV to teach our children about sex, the do's and don'ts? And before someone gets in my comments, oh, well, you can't tell kids not to have sex. They're going to do it anyway. Well, yeah, they might. But as a parent, the first voice about it should still come from you. What are we teaching our kids? Better yet, how much attention are we really paying to our kids? To even know what we need to have a conversation with them about and not? That's the question. One of the biggest problems that we have in our households and in our communities, and I know in the black community, I don't know about any other one, but we have this whole thought process and ideology that what happens in the house should stay in the house. And that's why so many people have grown up dealing with rejection, dealing with suicidal tendencies and thoughts, dealing with depression, dealing with being alone and isolated. They didn't feel like they had anybody that they could talk to to tell what was going on in the house. And what was even bigger than that is we spent so much time worried about the predators outside of the home that we didn't take the time to stop and look at and think about the ones who could be inside. And I know a lot of people will say it's because she likes kids. She's an edifile. I don't think she likes kids. She's an edifile by definition of what she did with a child. This is why the old folks would tell us sex is a grown folk game. It's not for kids and it's not for the immature. See, y'all think sex is just about getting off. And that lets you know how completely unprepared we are for it. And if we don't sit our kids down and tell them the dangers of it, besides just a baby or an STD, then we are setting them up for failure. Because what do you do when that urge hits you and you can't control it, huh? I mean, if we're going to talk about it, let's talk. Scoot up. All of the music talk about nothing but fighting and frucking. That's it. There's no in between. Throwing ass in the air. Every video, the girls throwing and showing ass. None no now they just want to screw but we don't have these conversations attachment theory all of the extras that come along with having sex like the more you have it the more you're going to want to and your body doesn't understand there's nobody around to fulfill this desire all the body understands is it wants that feeling again and with kids and young adults who barely know their own body how are we going to expect them to understand what to do when they have that urge if Marvin Gaye told us as adults when I get that feeling I need sexual healing how much more intense do you think that feeling is in young adults who are just getting introduced to it with no damn boundaries now all they want to do is get that release because it feels good and I need that feeling and we wonder why our children are unaliving each other because those hormones are all out of whack 
because you were introduced to something you weren't mature enough to handle. When women have sex, they are flooded with oxytocin and the oxytocin tends to cause women to develop a strong bond with the man she had sex with, even if it was her first time. Even if the woman planned on a no strings attached relationship, biochemically, it's virtually impossible. This is where soul ties comes from. During sex, women's dopamine and oxytocin levels rise. When she has an orgasm, a woman is flooded with oxytocin. She tends to bond strongly with that man. That's why she can't shake him. Men, on the other hand, experience a rise in dopamine levels during sex, along with testosterone and vasopressin, so they don't experience the same oxytocin rush that the women do. So unless the circumstances are just right, like they develop an emotional connection or a bond with them, they don't get attached as easily. That's why men can say it's just sex and women are looking like how because your body doesn't respond to it the way his does that's why you hear women say you tap this we go together or why women can't let go when he does because your soul is tied to him now we're not talking about if the sex was trash because that's easy to walk away from but that doesn't mean you won't still crave it that's what we don't understand. So if sex gives you an emotional connection, it gives you a mental connection because now you're thinking, I wonder what he's doing because your body wants to be where he is. Let's talk about it because if you're not careful, then your mind will start playing tricks on you because now you're wondering if he's making anyone else feel the way he makes you feel. Women are out here using shower heads to quench that urge. They're using toys. They sleep around because their hormones are controlling them and they never learn to get a hold on their hormones. All they know is when they start raging, I need to quench that thirst. And this girl decided the only way she could quench it is to get her little brother a seducing spirit. But see, y'all not ready for that conversation. The one where the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. What can be more wicked than to use your brother as an object to get off? Because in that moment, he wasn't her little brother. He was an object. And we don't think demonic influences are real. Do you not realize alcohol was named distilled spirits in 327 BC by Aristotle who believed that drinking distilled liquor put spirits in your body? And you don't think we are in spiritual warfare over the lives of our children. You don't think there is a demonic attack on our children. They are dying left and right. A funeral home owner said sometimes she has to step away and cry because just when she finishes taking in three, here comes four more. And you don't see a problem? You don't think our young people are in trouble? You don't think this is a sign of something greater? These kids don't know the difference between reality and fiction. Everything is lights, camera, action now. No, I don't think this girl likes kids. I think she was overly stimulated and at that moment when trying to do it herself didn't pan out, she needed something or someone for immediate gratification and she grabbed her brother. If you don't believe overstimulation is a thing, why do you think the women use the shower head? Do you think those were supposed to be for sexual gratification? Why do you think they sit on running dryers? Do you think that was created for sexual stimulation? Why do you think they grind on pillows? Because they have no self-control and they just have to get off. We are dealing with a generation with no self-control, mainly because you have adults saying, let them live. They're just having fun. You got it, flaunt it. They not hurting nobody. Shut the fuck up. Now you have this baby who knew what was being done was wrong, and I'm so glad he didn't have that inbred theology of what happens in the house stays in the house. He was brave enough to speak up so something could be done about it. How many others are going through this right now but are scared to say something? Was she touched before? Can you even imagine the trauma this baby is going to have to deal with understanding that his sister violated him? Can you understand how this six-year-old must be thinking? Now what if he decides because he was violated by a woman he doesn't want one? See these are the things we don't assess in situations like this. What conversations were had with him after to let him know that this wasn't his fault? That baby could be thinking right now about the fact that his sister is in the jail and he can't see her anymore because of him. He's six. 
He doesn't know how to process this or or how to process what he's feeling when he is aroused again because he's experienced an erection now from being aroused. So that feeling will come again. Who's talking to him about how to handle it? According to Justia.com, when the minor is the instrument of a perpetrator for the purposes of sexual gratification or stimulation, the actions may rise to the level of, of molestation. So I'm completely confused as to why she only receives statutes statutory rape and indecent acts with a child and not sexual assault, molestation, and a host of other charges. Because the only victim in this story is the six-year-old. You're so damn out of it that you don't even realize that a six-year-old isn't going to give you the pleasure that you need. That's how gone in the head she was. And you don't think this is spiritual. This is sick, twisted, demented, pathetic, disgusting, trifling, and a host of other things I won't say for the sake of my channel. But drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this one. Yeah, I'm a little hot about this one. I am. I am. Because we don't understand the danger of constantly throwing sex in the faces of our children. We don't understand that these are the kind of things that could happen. Not saying between brother and sister, but this stuff happens, period. Because sex can be a drug. And you know what happens with a drug when you can't get that next fix. You do anything to find it. And I do mean anything. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this. Consider becoming a confidant, joining the Fizz fam, the Champagne Gang. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we jump into another section for another show. Thank you for joining us in the Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. Until next time, Hennessy, Hennadoo. Think and drink responsibly and stay true. Till we meet again. Ta-ta.